Good morning, traders. So I want to start with something a little bit different this morning. Um, I will get onto normal TA very soon, but I think this is something really interesting. Um, now bear with me, it's quite advanced, but I will try and do my best to explain it as simply as I can so everyone who is watching can understand what exactly it is that I'm looking at on this chart. So basically what we have here is a uh, volume profile of the FTX uh, Bitcoin USD pair. Now, why I'm showing you this is that through different phases in the market, you get everyone kind of, I think, is aware by now there are market makers that are at play that are, have a big influence on price. Um, it seems to change between exchanges quite often. So in January, February kind of time, uh, everything was very much driven a lot of the time by Bybit. Um, they were the main perps. Uh, exchange that were driving prices higher, driving prices lower and controlling the market in a lot of way, at least the traders that are over there. Then we went into this alt season phase and obviously with alt season, Binance takes over. <clears throat> and then what we had again a couple of weeks ago was we had all of this uh, bit for next stuff going on. Now, the interesting thing is uh, since the bit for next stuff and since we had all of that FUD, uh, we've gone into a market that has been, again, very recently, the last few days, entirely controlled by FTX. And um, I'm just going to go over why that is. So where all the other exchanges are showing some ve uh, fairly kind of normal price action, what you would normally kind of expect from the market, FTX has seen like the most aggressive selling um, that I think I've I've ever seen um, on Bitcoin. However, we're only down about 10% from our highs. So this is really interesting, okay? So what we're looking at here, so this is all of the, the volume profile from this whole move up. And you can see here, consistently, we've got pretty high volume <clears throat> and we've got fairly decent positive delta on the day. So this is taking 170 million, 190 million, 200 million. Each of these days, taking a, a little bit of positive kind of, when you're looking at this, the, the difference between the amount of buyers and sellers on these days is able to take price up by 46%. So regularly seeing these 100s, 200s or even less, um, some of the big moves up that we had were done on very low delta, which meant that there weren't like a significant amount more buyers than sellers at market during these days. But it meant that any dips that there were were being brought up at limit and there was just no desire to sell um, any Bitcoin as this was going up. So at, at limit again, this is, so there was no actual distribution going on during this run, apart from maybe a very small amount that was up here. And then we had a very sudden change after this swing fader pattern on the highs over the weekend. All of a sudden, a really, really aggressive selling started coming in on the FTX exchange. And that has continued since, where were we? 1st of August. So that has been the whole month so far. As soon as the month started, we have just been seeing aggressive selling every single day. We've been getting negative, almost negative $500 million uh, delta on every single candle. At one stage yesterday, this was running at about negative $1 billion. So with, with the CVD coming up here, it's taken almost, well, actually twice as much um, capital to move the price down at this stage. We're looking, what, 10, 11%. So it's taken twice as much money to move price down 11% as it took to move price up 46%. So I think that's very telling of what is going on in the market right now. There is clear absorption going on here um, and this is not just retail they retail would not have enough money to be buying this up uh, this is clear absorption from big players within the market going on within this particular exchange other exchanges like i say a little bit more balanced but ftx certainly selling a lot of bitcoin here um well bitcoin derivatives perpetual contracts um at this point and someone um, or some group of traders over on that exchange is absorbing all of this. And again, on other exchanges, it's being absorbed as well. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, this is kind of, yeah, just what I've been seeing over the last yeah few <clears throat> days, how we've gone 
yeah, up so quickly, down so quickly and, and the amount of selling that we've got here. So I'm just going to quickly go on to um, just another little template here and just show you this again. So I'm going to go back over onto FTX and this, this is happening on Binance a little bit as well. But yeah, mainly the FTX exchange at the moment that's really kind of controlling this price action. So again, you can see here just consistent selling across the board, like the CVD at this stage down. Yeah, basically $805 million more being sold at market uh, than there is being bought at the moment. Okay. But every time we take out some lows, so I'm going to just going to change this onto this and you can see even as price is going up, a lot of selling going on, but you come down and then it's just all of these bids being pulled. You come down, allow it to take the lows, a sudden decrease in volume, and then look, price shoots back up. You see this aggressive selling coming down as it takes the lows, decrease in volume. And on this occasion, actually quite a big buy right at the low there and then price coming back up. And again, really, really aggressive uh, selling going on. And finally, we've taken the lows and volume has completely disappeared. Okay, so like you would you would think that if there was a desire to actually push this market down by the people that are pushing this market down, all they would need to do is continue selling at this point. Like all they need to do is just keep their foot on the gas, just keep pressing that sell button and you, they could easily take price down to 36K or 35K. It would not take very much at all. There is enough fear in this market right now um, to take price down with a few million dollars. It would not be difficult, but it's not happening yet. And that's what is really, really quite surprising is that we just keep doing this. And it's like, what, this is now the fourth or fifth time in a couple of days that it's done this. And again, just completely, okay, yeah, cool. We've taken a low. Now let's let our foot off the sell button and, and uh, allow this price to float back up again. Very, very strange behavior but really, really interesting. Um, and it will be fascinating to see actually what happens and how this plays out over the next few days because if this stops being absorbed, we'll find ourselves at 36, 35K within the space of an hour or two. Um, with the amount of selling that's going on right now, all they would need to do is keep this up and the absorption to stop. So the people who are buying this at limit just gonna be like, nah, had enough. Um, so everyone who's buying this dip just think now I've had enough and um, we'll very, very quickly see ourselves at 36 or 35K. But if the absorption continues and we're getting this much selling going on, then we could see a big short squeeze again. Um, and we saw that last week or well, two weeks ago. And this does have the potential to really, really squeeze again. And I mean like another big, like double digit gain um, if this does squeeze. So yeah, um, I think I've covered enough on that at the moment. As we're on XO, we may as well stay on XO and let's have a look just at the TPO. And we'll go back to, we'll go back to buy a bit on this because this is what we are looking at as our exchange. And again, we can see just this morning, we have taken the lows here from yesterday. So what we did have is a very kind of low volume, low put in, not much of a, again, it's just consistent. You take, you come down, bounce, take the lows, bounce, take the lows, bounce. And again, on this, uh, this morning, we have taken the lows and are getting that bounce again. So we've had a few interesting trades once again, off of this, uh, you see here acceptance outside of the initial balance, and then you can take these shorts off the VWAP. So, so far, shorts still paying off. Um, the actual trading this and just normal trading uh, is relatively simple because what you are doing by taking this short off of VWAP is you are looking for continuation and for it to take the low where this occurred. So, yeah, um, fairly... Actually, although we're, we're getting clear manipulation um, on one exchange, the, the actual trading of this has been, been relatively decent. Uh, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see how this develops. We'll see if we can get this acceptance back within this value area, if we can get acceptance back within the initial balance and maybe at some point uh, start to change the bigger macro kind of market structure that we have going on, which again, you can see high, lower, high, lower, high, lower, high, lower, high, lower, high, lower, high consistently making these lower highs. We did have a mini change of 
market structure yesterday and we had the potential for this to form a trident quasimodo pattern on the new day but again just just couldn't do it came into yesterday's point of control <clears throat> wasn't able to get there and we initiated another move down from that so yeah uh that's about everything on on extra charts that i want to cover so let's go back to the charts that i guess most of you are more familiar with and i want to show everybody this now i didn't have all of this on my chart yesterday i do have a few anchor v wraps on there but i didn't have very importantly um this one that we have from the low most recently and what has happened here so Again, for anyone who's not aware, like an anchored VWAP is basically your moving point of control. Um, it acts as it tells you the average price of the asset after it's kind of calculated all of the volume that's occurred since the yeah since the time. So you can get VWAPs for the session, which reset every day. You can get VWAPs for the week, obviously reset every week, the month, the year, etc. And then you have these anchored VWAPs. So you can choose where you put them. And this will tell you the average price that has been traded um, from the volume uh, of contracts that have been traded for this particular move. And yesterday, we came in perfectly to this anchored VWAP from our lows, which was taken from the very, very bottom that we had uh, the other week. Now, we've just obviously taken that out. But the other thing that's very interesting is this purple one is our anchored VWAP from the start of the i guess at this stage you would say bear market so as we got that confirmed change of market structure we came back in hit our point of control at this point so anyone who can remember this we hit a point of control and a golden pocket and tons and tons and tons of other confluence there very very easy short to take and this has been as you can see this is what held price down when we were here so we came into that anchored VWAP, rejected, not ready to get over it yet, came down, got some shorts in, got that liquidity that was needed, got that fuel that was needed to move up, and now attempting to hold this as support. Now, this is really, really important. To fall back below these at this stage would be incredibly bearish. So this is why I believe that we're seeing so much absorption going on right now, that it's very important that price does hold above these levels. Now, again, these two lines here, once again, are very important. So this uh, golden one, uh, quite fitting, uh, the golden one is from our all-time high. So we have the, the golden one up here from our all-time high, which is currently sat around uh, $43,200. And we have this gray one here, which is from our yearly open, uh, sat around $45,800. So right now you can see how well these anchored VWAPs are working. You can see the respect that they are getting on the price. And um, if we do, again, see a move up, you would naturally expect one or both of these levels to act as resistance on the way back up. So, um, yeah, thank you. I can't remember who it was. Um, <clears throat> I'd have to just check the Discord who it was who pointed this out to me yesterday, but thank you to them who, um, who pointed out this uh, move and then whoever it was else that, that reminded me that we have the uh, the anchored VWAP coming in here from these highs as well. So yeah, great stuff. That's why we have a, a wonderful community within here um, that yeah can spot things that sometimes not even I'm looking at. Uh, so thank you for that. Now let's go back onto our, let's go a little bit more short time frame, and we can take a look at our range actually so let's just have another quick look at this so what we do have on the more bearish side of things i always do that um on the more bearish side of things is we do clearly have acceptance back within value area of this range okay so you can see our value area high at 38,620. our value area low at 32,220. And our point of control at 32825 on some exchanges on some uh depending on your settings this is up around 34 200 34 600 something around there but again this for me uh as the yeah uh, quite clear levels uh for me that i'm looking at so this is the bearish side of things we have seen this acceptance back within the value area and that would naturally lead us to be looking for lower prices however what is going on is very interesting and you have to be aware that a VWAP, especially with the, the amount of history that's on these um, 
on these average prices that we're, we're getting is also very, very significant. So you can see the volume that we've got here. You can see the historical volume that is here. And this is increasing on the way down. So it does mean that the support gets stronger as we go down. But um, yeah, it's very much uh, could go either way. All it would need to do is stop being absorbed and we'll very easily find ourselves back down here. However, for now, I am yeah fairly happy to, to be scaling into a long position. But again, I am short from the highs, so it's easy for me to say that um, as well. Okay, uh, anything else that we want to cover on this? Uh, we did have... No. Um, from our high time frame levels, if we do drop down further, I guess our, our high time frame levels at the moment, there's not much going on within this area. We do have this four hour OB that we were looking at and we do have these four hour lows down here. Uh, from a daily perspective, straight line up. So, I mean, you can't really draw that much on there, but you could, uh, people would tell you otherwise. But when you see a big wick like this and then a big wick down, I'd say that's fairly significant. Okay, so I would be happy enough to mark this as a daily level within this run just because there's a lack of anything else to actually go over. Uh, so that to me would be a not not the strongest, um, but it'd be a relatively decent level to be putting on your chart as well. So I'm going to keep that one on there and we'll just see if price does continue to move down throughout the day. Uh, to see if there is any reaction there and this is purely just based off the size of the wick um, on both days on this occasion and you would say as this being a nice a nice point within this little range or this little trend that we had going up last week um, again the other high time frame levels are you're really looking down towards this daily and then clearly our monthly level uh, down here we can also draw confluence with that with our fibs so our 0.5, draw our 0.5 on there, is right on this daily level. So this is basically, if you hear someone saying the EQ of the range, um, the equilibrium, this is the equilibrium of the current range that we're in. Yeah, forget those lows down there. Uh, this is kind of the, the proper low that was put in. But if we could always pull this down and say, look, range still here. And you still got that confluence within this area. The other thing we do have is we do have this golden pocket that's coming in around that 43,200 area. So we do see this big high volume node, depending on what your fixed range is saying or how you're getting your volume point of control. You may also have a point of control within here as well. So certainly uh, levels to be aware of. For me, uh, 36K, very, very obvious EQ of the range. Back to these highs, <clears throat> be very normal for us to test these highs. Um, and we've got the EQ of this little range going on here. And then we come down here and we've got the high volume node, potential point of control with our golden pocket a little bit lower around 34, with 35K acting as, I guess, slight resistance, uh, slight support in between those. Um, yeah, <laughs> well, what, what has it been anyway? It's been like, yeah, 36, 35, 34K. Very, very, very easy to remember. Uh, da, 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 da. let's have a look what else is on this chart if there's anything else I do want to cover uh, we have our fib speed resistance fan that is coming down now we didn't really come into the 618 here on this um, again log nothing really on that but we can zoom out and I can just show this on the chart very quickly so this is taken from our all time high and you come all the way down to this being our low, uh, the recent swing low. And you can see how we've got the 618 touch there. And again, you would expect if price comes into it, you could say it almost did, um, then that would act as resistance. We could also pull this down here. Um, yeah, not, not giving us so much on that. But yeah, from all time high to our recent low, there's clearly this uh, coming down as resistance on there. What else? We could also pull a speed fan. I think I did this yesterday. Uh, we could pull a speed fan from here. And you would say if we were to get a move down over the next couple of days into this 36k area, this would look very nice for a bounce. So you have speed fan acting as support and this could potentially reverse. But 
what we'd need to see for that is for this absorption to stop. So again, until this absorption stops happening, um, we're not going to see a big move down. Uh, but on the same side of things, until this aggressive selling and market stops happening, then we're not going to see a move up. So at some point, some side, either the bulls or the bears are going to have to give up on this. Either the bulls stop buying the dip or the bears stop market selling into those limit orders um, and stop selling their, yeah, stop aggressively selling this. Some point, something is going to change and we'll see quite an explosive move out of it. And yeah, we'll just have to trade it level by level until then and see what happens. Uh, do, 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 do. This has been quite a long video. <laughs> um, let's go on to, let's just go on to Ethereum. I don't think I've really got anything else to say on this one. Unless we're going super low time frame. Um, hey, you know what? Let's go super low time frame. Let's just do it. Let's uh, put our VWAP on. So you can see here. We have our daily, our weekly, our monthly VWAP. You can see here how it keeps on taking these lows out. Coming back into the VWAP, keeps rejecting. And the other uh, interesting thing we had off of this, move it on to a 30 minute chart, is this is another trade that we do use within the community. And <clears throat> if you get this acceptance outside of the initial balance, you can then trade off of the VWAP um, and look for continuation on that. So we can go even deeper on this. Let's go back onto the five minute because this has all happened quite quickly. And we can look at this stage for, I always choose the wrong one, our <laughs> fib extensions. And you can see here, it came right into that 1.618, which would have been your take profit level off of this trade if you had taken it. Uh, again, you could have taken another one here. Now you've got to remember, like, you've got to allow these things room. Uh, so if you were to take a short off of this, um, you would have been taken short possibly off of here. As long as you're allowing yourself enough room and you're looking down towards this 1.618, then that's uh yeah that's a pretty good trade that gives you a risk to reward of five to one almost so quite an easy easy trade to take again you could have done it here if you didn't get on on the first one and at this point you would have been looking eh, same stuff same thing uh because it didn't take a low or a high so you'd have been looking for the same target and again on this occasion you front run the vwap a little bit but uh if you get in where did it bounce around that 1.618 fib uh, expansion that we have on here so that's all very yeah quite interesting stuff on the lower time frames that we have um, if you'd like to learn more about these setups we do have very detailed videos on this and we do explain exactly how you can trade these setups within the crew um, so I'm happy to give like a brief explanation on here, but I'm not going to go too in detail of what exactly it is you're looking for when you take these setups. But again, you join the crew and you can come and have a look. Uh, we have a playbook um, that have lots of setups like these on there and yeah, uh, tutorial videos of exactly how you would trade these. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu, what else can we look at on here? We can have a look at our... Daily point of control. So you can see here, trying to get acceptance back within this value area. And then you have our daily point of control up here. Because we've had like a really strange day, I guess, um, with just, yeah, choppiness. Uh, it's, we could pull this fib and have a look at our golden pocket. Again, coming in around this this area here. So you'd be looking at yeah, this zone here is resistance. If if it does reclaim the VWAP, you, you're looking at resistance right above you. And then the other interesting thing that we have as well would be from our daily open <coughs> being just above that. And then our Monday low, again, which is where it got stopped yesterday, uh, being again, once again, resistance on there. I did see something interesting on, yeah, so you have our weekly view up that could be coming into our monthly low later on today, if we get up there. So again, uh, we'd be looking for this to reclaim this, to change the market structure. You've got a lot of resistance to get through to get there, uh, but we could be looking at our view up coming in 
to our Monday low and then we could take a trade off of that. Uh, you could also swing failure pattern these highs and get a good trade off of that. The other thing that was quite nice on this was I put on the previous day Iki, uh, previous day mid. So our, our midpoint for all of yesterday's price action is right on that Monday low as well. So again, the easiest way to, to find this is to pull a fib from high to low from yesterday and you can just put on your 0.5. So the entire range from yesterday, from high to low, our midpoint is right here once again at significant resistance. So the low time frame is giving some really, really tradable setups again today. Like this is, this is despite all the manipulation um, from a particular exchange, um, this is really, really nice trading. And, um, I don't even know if, at this stage if I'd say it's manipulation. I guess for me, like still shorts are, are the easy ones to take. So you come up here and you can you can take short off the VWAP. Great, you can take short off the VWAP. You can take short off the VWAP. Yesterday, three occasions where we could have taken short off the VWAP. Um, you come into the middle of the range here from this high and you come into the daily EQ. Um, Outside of value area, you get that rejection outside of value area, you come back in and uh, yeah, right back into this high volume node, you get the rejection, you come outside of your initial balance, you get these shorts again. It's actually really nice trading. So despite everything I say at the beginning, um, I personally um, trading this at least from like short term day trading perspective, the shorts are the ones that are paying off. So I guess that's why you were seeing so much selling at market. Um, you can call it manipulation or you can just call it very efficient trading with clear absorption going on at limit. Um, so that's, yeah, I guess my strategy has been the same as what a lot of the market's doing. I'm happy to absorb this price. I'm happy to buy this area. I'm happy to buy this dip. But my actual trading has been mainly shorts over the last few days and that will continue. We come up to this area, I will most likely take a short off of that. We come up to this area, I will certainly take a short off of that. And um, then we're looking again up here, weekly open, uh, if we can get through all of this. And um, yeah, shorts again. So yeah, uh, cool. I'm at 27 minutes on this video. I'm gonna very quickly, I hope you're still following this because this is actually, <laughs> I'm just going in on everything today. I hope you're finding this useful um, because it's not often that I say, I guess this much about what I'm doing on the charts. Um, so yeah, hopefully I've, this is very useful for everyone uh, watching. We'll have a look on Ethereum. I'm not going to go as in depth on that, don't worry. Um, Ethereum very simply, very simply. Um, you know, it's mainly the ETH BTC chart. We've had this bounce of the daily. We're getting resistance here off of the weekly level. And uh, for me personally, I have been in a short in Ethereum and I've continued to hold that. So um, yeah, I'm happy to continue to hold that. Again, you can see how well the, this anchored VWAP from the lows worked on Ethereum by pro holding price up. Um, yeah, Litecoin again, looking very nice. So Litecoin, as we know, uh, let me remove all these levels from my chart. Litecoin, as we know, is in this monster, 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 monster wedge. Um, so we've been, yeah, a few months in the making. It's holding above this daily level. Very important. And you'd have to say if this breaks out, you're looking at a pretty decent move up from where we are now. I'd say up about, whoops. Um, why does it never actually do this when I want it to do this? There we go. We're looking at a potential move up of about 12% uh, from where price is. So if we're looking at that, this is the BTC pair, by the way. If we're looking at that on the USD pair, you can see it's holding this weekly. Then we'll probably be looking back at these swing highs again, possibly take out these highs. So depending on what Bitcoin does, um, if Bitcoin moves up and Litecoin can move up with it, we could very easily see price back at $160 again. Um, if of course this all fails and Bitcoin or and Litecoin falls the wrong side out of that wedge, then we'd probably see ourselves back at 120. But then what we do have, 
very nice change of market structure coming back into your reference and you can trade that up so there's there's potential here across the board um whether this is taking longs up here or whether we do get that breakdown and we're looking at swing trades lower down again off of this um the other interesting setup that we found yesterday on the stream uh so thank you again to whoever it was that asked me to do uh some ta on this is near usdt um I've never traded this asset before, but we do have a nice trade on this one <clears throat> that we'd be looking at around $1.9. Again, this you'd have to see Bitcoin dump, I think, to get this. But this does give a really nice, uh, very simple trade off of here um, with an absolutely classic. Again, we teach this within the crew. Um, Trident Quasimodo pattern that you would trade up to your one-to-one -one extension. Uh, we've got an order block up here as well. A really, really, really good trade. Um, Anything else moving? BZRX, an old favorite of mine, getting a move up today. I'd say, well, we've got an old weekly level up here. Um, you, you really don't need much more than these these very simple horizontals sometimes uh, to trade these. So yeah, BZRX looking decent today. Um, and I do also want to show RSR and Quant. Um, so first of all, RSR. We have, so if you remember what um, what Litecoin looks like, so remember what Litecoin looks like, monster, monster, monster wedge, um, and uh, what you would be looking for if you get a breakout is look at that for a move up on, on this asset. So very, very similar structure going on here. I'll go back to Litecoin in a minute, but print this into your mind. Um, Print that wedge into your mind. Remember this wedge, or just look at the charts that I posted on this when it was forming um, from a couple of weeks ago. Take a look at that, and uh, then we take a look at this. <clears throat> okay, and that shows you what can happen once you see a big formation like this. Like this Litecoin one is even bigger. So again, we could see a 12% move up is minimum target. Realistically, we're probably looking at like much more like. I guess at this stage probably a 30 to 40 percent move if if <laughs> bitcoin can play ball and um and litecoin follows i but i do think if we do unless we see bitcoin dump i think we could very easily be seeing litecoin surprise a lot of people and actually that that is yeah that's pretty much again perfection for a trade so you'd be looking for a breakout out of this and you'd want a long very easy to have your invalidation, clearly at the lows here. And you trade it up to your golden pocket, gives you a 3.2 risk to reward. Very, very nice. Uh, cool. We'll follow price action again throughout the day as this develops. If we do get a dump, I'll try and live stream it um, and we'll see how that goes. Um, apologies again for the live stream yesterday. It got a little, uh, yeah, we have open discussion within the community. Um, Sometimes people come in and spoil that, but hey, overall, uh, yeah, uh, the live streams are really good and it's great to talk to everyone within the community as well. So yeah, thank you for watching. If you have been watching for 33 minutes, then uh, yeah, I hope you found this interesting and I'll catch you all in the next video. Cheers guys. Bye.